Welcome back to the OSM channel. In today's video, I'd like to teach you how to make an off-grid downspout rainwater collection system. First, why am I making this system right now? Well, I've been heavily expanding my garden. In fact, it's just about doubled in size. Where I live, in order to irrigate my garden, I need to run my well pump. I received the notice from the electric company about two weeks ago that they are increasing electric rates by 20%. So if I want to continue to irrigate my garden by way of well pump, it's going to more than double the electric cost to run that well pump. So I figured now would be a good time to invest in a rainwater collection system. So we're going to have that water to irrigate our garden, but we're also going to have it for emergency use. Is it potable water? Not really, but I could absolutely run a garden hose in the house to feed toilets or stuff like that if you really need it. So it's nice to have an emergency supply of water that's gonna be sitting up on my hillside and you'll see how this system comes together here shortly. Now let's quickly go over each individual component of my system starting with the downspout diverter. So this ties right into your downspout. We are gonna to have to cut a section of our downspout in order to install this but the reason I selected this one is because it has an adjustable valve. So when you have the valve parallel to the diverter no rainwater will be diverted into the outlet pipe. It'll all go straight down. Now, when you turn this perpendicular to the diverter, about 80% of the rainwater gets diverted into the outlet pipe so long as that pipe can handle it. Now, coming out of our rainwater diverter will be a garden hose. And in order to attach the garden hose to this diverter, I had to get a little bit creative. I soldered on a garden hose quick connect to this copper fitting that I had, and this fits right inside this uh, tubing that they included with the diverter, so that's gonna work out just fine. But the garden hose is gonna feed into a manifold, and then from there, I'm gonna have another piece of garden hose going from the manifold to my 275 food grade IBC tote. In order to connect the garden hose to that IBC tote, I have this IBC tote to garden hose adapter, eight bucks on Amazon. So here's another really important thing to note upon. If you want to have your system as to where when your holding tank, your 55 gallon drum or IBC tote, if you want your system to automatically stop putting water into the tote when it's full, what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to level this point on your diverter valve with the top of your tank. Because what will happen when your tank fills up to this point, if it goes above that point, you know, the water in the garden hose is gonna to wanna to level out, but if it goes above this line, it's gonna feed over the diverter valve and it's gonna feed back down into the downspout. So I think I've engineered this system pretty well. The only limiting factor here will be the inner diameter of the garden hose because it's gonna be much smaller than the included tubing, which is probably like inch and a quarter ID tubing. I, I don't know what typical garden hose is, maybe half inch, five eighths ID, something like that. So. We'll have to see how quickly that IBC tote fills up, but uh, according to my research, I think half inch ID tubing or piping has a flow rate of like 10 to 15 gallons per minute. So with a decent rainfall, I mean, it should fill up that tank in not much time at all. Diverter valve open. Garden hose zip tied onto this support strap on the gutter. But the reason we have this diverter valve so high is because it's gonna allow me to put the tank over on the hillside there, preserving more of that potential energy that the water has. Now 
Now this is the corner of the house right here. Everything slopes downhill. So I figure here is a good place to install my manifold. Now this hose was already broken. What we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to cut the hose right here. Mail fitting in, which will feed water into this manifold. And then one of these ports on this manifold, of course, is gonna go up to the water holding tank. Then the other three ports, well, we can do whatever we want with them. We could run drip irrigation lines, timed drip irrigation lines in the garden, fill up water cans. We're not gonna have enough water pressure, I don't think, to run a sprinkler, but you get the idea. Possibilities are almost endless. Okay, so I'm getting ready to install the IBC tote. Nice and high up on the hillside, we'll have a lot of potential energy with that water and hopefully get decent water pressure. So, if you recall earlier, I mentioned that if you want to ensure that your holding tank does not overflow and once it gets full, that water is routed back into the diverter down the downspout, it's critically important that the top of your container remain level, if not a little bit higher than the valve and the diverter. So I have two elevation stakes and these are really gonna help me out. So last night I was out here with this laser level and I got an elevation, a parallel line to the underside of the gutter on the soffit. So the top of this stake is parallel to the underside of the gutter. Now when I was installing that diverter, I took a measurement from the underside of the gutter down to that diverter valve and I measured it to be 23 inches down. So we have our 23 inches down from the underside of the gutter mark right there. And then uh, the reason I have the level out right now is because I wanted to install another stake on the hillside. So we have our 23 inches down and I just made a parallel line to this point right here. Now, the top of the container should be at this height or a little bit higher. And that's gonna help to ensure that when the tank gets full, again, all that extra water gets diverted back into the downspout. That line's right about there. So we're probably going to plan to put our tank somewhere in this area here. So I'm going to clean up this brush, drag the tank up here. Maybe I'll dig this out a little bit, have it sit down in the ground a little bit. And we'll figure it out as we go along here. All right, I got my pad leveled out. You can see the top of the tank is just a little bit higher than my 23 inches down from the underside of the gutter mark, so everything looks real good. Now one thing you gotta be leery of when you're using an IBC tote or any kind of clear tote for rainwater collection system is algae buildup. You can prevent that by installing a cover on your tank, and that's exactly what I got. Spent 10 bucks on this cover, so let's throw that on. All right, let's hook up our hose coupler. Now, if you're planning on doing the same thing, it's important to note that there are different thread types for these IBC totes. For my particular tote, it had coarse threads. Therefore, I purchased a coarse thread coupler. There's a nice seal, just like a silicone seal. So I'm fairly confident that this will not leak. Get this good and tight. 
check for our washer on our garden hose and hook up our garden hose. Good to go. So this is our hose line that goes up to the holding tank. I just need to install a female fitting on the end of this and then we'll connect it to the manifold, open up the supply to the holding tank line, and then we wait for rain, see if everything works. So there's the hose line coming out of the diverter. Runs down along the existing gutter system, just zip tied. Not the prettiest looking thing, should have gone with the white hose, but I'm using what I had. Our manifold is on the corner of the house there. And then the water tank hose goes up the hill to the water tank. It's not too much of an eyesore, and once everything starts greening up and growing in, you'll hardly be able to see it. Now, how much water pressure can we expect on flat ground right here? Well. I estimate that that tank gains about 16 feet in elevation. For every one foot you go up in elevation, water PSI is 0.433. So if we multiply 16 by 0.433 PSI, I think we get just under seven PSI of pressure. So if you wanna know what the pressure is gonna be on flat ground, it's gonna be a little under seven PSI as we go downhill in the front yard, we will gain even more pressure. But about seven PSI pressure is uh, plenty of pressure for what I'm looking to do here. I mean, really all I needed was a gravity fed system to supply water to uh, my expanded garden here and the existing garden. And I have more garden beds down along the right there. So very pleased with this system so far. Again, we'll have to wait for the rainfall to see if it actually works. Anyway, I'd like to thank you for watching. As always, I will catch you on the next one.